gonna jump right into it, no. We was having a conversation behind the scenes and I was saying, man, this conversation is very interesting. I wish we had the camera rolling, so you said turn it on. So we just gonna, you know, start it out in an in an unorthodox way this right, time. Right, right, right. When we, when we talk about Akhenaten, because first, our last video, we was talking about Reverend Ike. And we was talking about how the preachers, a lot of the prosperity preachers, they, they're teaching you about how energy and the law of attraction. So they'll give you a lot of truth, but they'll mix the lies in it. And that's how they hook you into their, into their church to get you to keep going to them to make you think that, um, okay, the law of attraction is real, but... It got, it is, God still exists outside of you. Right, right, right. So when we talk about Akhenaten, this revolutionary spiritual uh, 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 Chemite, Chemite right. in antiquity, was it the same way? Did he, did, was the priesthood teaching people that God was outside of them and Akhenaten was like, hold up, hold up, hold, hold up. God is in you. We're worshiping 10, 15, 30 other gods and you're supposed to be worshiping there's only one God that creates all of this. No matter how bad or good it looks, it all emanates from one God. So is, was that the same concept that Akhenaten tried to come with uh, back in the day that we still see happening today? Okay, so we have to understand in, in concept, Agnaton would be kind of like Reverend Ike. We're talking about how he, Reverend Ike yeah, yeah. totally revolutionized Christianity from the perspective of taking the concept of outward God inside, yeah, right? Saying Christ is in you and all so that. So now, the, this is the, this, we have to understand, we're looking at Kemet through a European lens. And we don't understand the vastness of Kemet. You know, I think we're looking at it from a, a even even African, so-called African Americans, you know, who identify with Kemet culturally. We don't understand the vastness. You know, you, can you understand what thousands of years is? And when someone, when 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 a civilization is in constant for thousands of years, people talk about well, Kemet fell. Well, it fell after thousands of years. We're talking about upwards of over ten thousand years. It was sustained. Now, Rome felt Rome didn't have a thousand years. Neither did Greece. Okay, so when you and you can talk about you know the Sumerian, cool, but but Kemet had thousands. So we thought, listen, I'm not talking about and, a, a and, couple of hundred, brother. And to which, put it in the perspective, right. as powerful as America is, it's only been around Some for hundreds. yeah a couple of hundred years. Because years, yeah. So yeah. just to put it in perspective, put it put, yeah. put it in perspective, yeah. thousands. So the root. Of what Reverend Ike was talking about is as far as accountability, self-accountability is pretty much what the interface of Kemet was about overall. Okay, what that means is the Nasut or the Pai Haru, the House of Light, what they miscall Pharaohs, that sat on the throne. Their whole construct was about being of service to serve the people. They were judged on the quality of service to the people. We talked about Reverend Ike. We said how Reverend Ike uh, not only became a multi-millionaire, but what made him so special was that 70 to 80 percent of his congregation were either went from being poor to middle class to upward middle class to become wealthy. And he basically they empowered him and then he re-empowered them. And so we look at ancient Kemet. Ancient Kemet was from a perspective of the rulership or the, the royal families were built on their constant to be of service to their people. Now, the concept of God or divine, um, one God, was not founded just by Ignatian, okay, or Aten Ra or Kun, okay. The concept of inter or netter or nature or nature, right, was powerful about the, 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 the phrase that they call God was the sound. And the sound mm, is masculine and the t, t is feminine. Hence, when you see the, 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 mother, the mother deities or expressions of God at form of heteru or you, you see the, the attribute of ma'at or you see the attribute of aset or imbetet. So what made Kemet unique as far as the acknowledgement of divine or cre the creator was that it acknowledged the male and female aspects of the most high. You know, the fatherly aspects of the protector and the nurturing aspects of the mother. So that's why you see always there's a male and female complement when you deal with the spiritual systems in Kemet. 
Right. So what it's saying, in essence, is that the attributes of God, goddess, reside throughout the principles of the creative expression. When you talk about, so basically the, the concept of one God, monotheism, it was always in existence of one creates many. It's mathematics. From one becomes two, and two becomes three. Creation, trinity. The whole point of the trinity was one, one, is, one becomes two, two creates three. And the trinity is the continuum. You know what I'm saying? The beginning, the middle, and the aftermath. And it continue, continues and continues. When you look at what, the, what happened politically with Aten Ra Kun or Ignatian, the main thing was that the, the, the priesthood of Amun Ra at that point had such political, social, and economic power. Each, each of the uh, different um, elite or royal families had specific houses of worship or aspects of the vine. So you'll see that you know you, you had the priesthood of Amun Ra, you know, worshipped an aspect, you know, worshipped or gave praise and to an aspect of the One Most High, inter God, representing the hidden light of God. You know, God is within. So in, in essence, they are teaching how you know Amun Ra is within you. God is in within you. The point of Aten Ra Kun. He, you know, the name Amen was part of those names of the Nasut or the king and queens of Kemet. It was passed on. He changed it because his whole concept was, well, I want to represent the aspect of inter, of God, as the revealed light. And one of the, what I see the wonder of God that I'm seeing resonate is God representing as the disc, the sun disc of Ra. Okay, so I feel that I'm going to open up the roots of our temples that, are, that were closed, internal, Amen Ra, hidden, and I'm going to reveal the light. Aten Ra means the revealed light of God. Amen Ra means the hidden light of God. So they both, in principle, were right and exact. But what you saw, the, we're looking at it through a European lens. So you saw the struggle of influence. Agnaitin or Aten Ra Kun was, was revolutionary because he decided to move, you know, at that point, you know, almost thousands of years of, of where they were moving with the influence of the priesthood to, to actually change them and, 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 and go against them and create a whole nother system of worship with the accordance of Aten Ra, okay? And that's what allowed him to be a target that's what made now mind you um brother rich there were other there were smaller temples like there were temples of ma'at temple of tahuti ma'at representing you know balance and justice and harmony uh tahuti divine intelligence there were many different and again uh, the ancestors now looking at through european lens did not worship many gods and goddesses these are just attributes principles of the one divine inter netter nature or netter right hence nature so um, that the priesthood of Amun Ra were had so much political power, right? That uh, after Ignatian or Amun or Aten Ra Kun passed on, the son Tutankhamen, who had the name Tutankhaten, but because because uh, his family changed it to Tutankhamen because they wanted to be accordance with the priesthood. But it was told that he in secret was still worshipped and did the principal worship uh, in, in, in accordance to Aten Ra, but he had to do it in secret. Because once Ignatian transitioned, the priesthood still came back into power. And the priesthood had immediate influence um, to the Nasuda of the Paharus of ancient Kemet. Now, that could be looked upon how like, we, we have the senates, you know, the, the senate passed votes, you know, like in, in, in America, you have the senators. So that you could look at the Amun Ra priesthood like that, you know, the senators, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah, kind of like we have in, in this country, the senators hold, uh, you know, uh, the Congress and the senators, you know, they have a certain amount of power that the commander in chief doesn't have or the commander chief has a certain type of power but the congress and the senate can come together and pretty much go against whatever the president has in place so when you look at the political climate in ancient Kemet, it was similar with the priesthoods of um what we call abin ra or the priesthood of amin ra it was they had a serious social political climate and again we're looking at the lens from a European perspective, we look at the vastness of Kemet. We, we're thinking, you know, they, they, you know people, people always say, well, Kemet fell. But from where? They fell from where? 
You talk, you talk about thousands of years, then they, they, they fell. By the time you see the Greeks, Romans, and, and the Arabs all in Kemet, the Arabs never left, you're talking about they have ruled, they were in accordance for over 10,000 years, uninterrupted. That's why they were known as the oldest civilization, because they were uninterrupted, they had uninterrupted in their African, in that part of East North Africa, they had their influence uninterrupted. So by the time you see, hear anything about the Hyksos, the Greeks, Romans, and the Arabs, this was after thousands of years of uh, ruling and mainly diminished the, the diminishing of Kemet at the, as we know it from high antiquity, uh, Brother Rich, to being susceptible to outside forces mainly was the disagreement over time be because of the priesthoods. That's what happened. The, you know, the, 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 the social political disagreements between like the Amin Ra priesthood and other priesthoods made and then the, the, uh, the, the leadership, you know, the, the, the Pai Heru or the, the Nasut that was actually or the Shechem that was actually in power. That that when that Trinity harmony was off, that's what allowed them to be able to be taken over. You know, so the, really the last renaissance of Kemet is when Nubia you know, through Tahaka, you know, came up in there and, and got that and got that thing back and rocked out for a little while. You know, but many people don't understand, you know, Kemet is not in what we call modern day Egypt, it's just not on that area. You know, at one point where you see the modern day Jews are at in what they call, you know, uh Palestine mm -hmm. and Jerusalem Jerusalem Jerusalem, am I saying right? Jerusalem Jerusalem. Jerusalem, right. That was considered part of Kemet. That all of that landmass that they call the Middle East was considered at that when in, at the height of ancient Kemet's antiquity, that was part of the territory. And that it went from like Mount Sinai, all of there over, you know, all of that area where they, you know, the Mount modern day, you know, Palestines and the Jews are fighting, all of that area up into what you call Lower Kemet, Upper Kemet, all the way up into Nubia, into Ethiopia. All of that was Kemet. All of that was part of the same lineage. We're talking about thousands of years ago. We're not talking about, you know, since uh, Christianity and Islam. We're talking about thousands of years ago. Th all of that was considered part of their, their civilization and their influence. So, you know, you have people arguing that the Nubians at one time, you know, were, were, were fighting with the Kemites. The, the Nubians and the Kemites were the same family. They just, they just had a, they were in different locations. Matter of fact, some of the, some of the main uh, powerful temples, um, that that are that are right now unfortunately underwater, right now are uh, in, 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 um, in in pyramids, smaller pyramids are in Nubia, you know what I'm saying? Uh, in Nubia, and actually were built. Way, uh, most of those temples have uh, in, in, in pyramids were built way before uh, modern documentation, like Tahaka and the Nubian so-called uh, came up into Kemet and ruled Kemet. No, because the whole point, with brother Rich, when when the Kemites made their transition. Did you know that they were being, they were buried facing the south? No. Yes. Every, every Kemite at that time was buried facing the south. Why? Because they were paying acknowledgement to their ancestors. Ancient Kemet ancestors believed that their, their people came up out of the south. So that's Ethiopia, Kinda, Uganda, all up in that area, okay? Where the now, ex, you know, it, it extends itself, you know, the, the origins of the now, and they moved up over time. So they moved up from the Kinda, Uganda area, up into Ethiopia, up into, you know, modern day Sudan, Nubia, up into crystallized what we, like modern day Egypt, what we call Kemet or Taimari, okay? Smaitawi means the unification of upper and lower Kemet, unification of the lands. Again, when we talk about Kemet, we're not looking from a European view that is just this part landmass. Ancient Kemet has to be looked upon holistically going like again, again from modern day Jerusalem, Palestine, all the way up into lower Kemet, all the way up to upper Kemet, into Sudan with the modern, you know, Nubia, all into Ethiopia. That's Kemet. That's how far the land and the influence went. And the vastness, the thousands of years, and the main principle, Brother Rich, was the service. When the priesthood and the royal family were in tune and they continued to serve their contingency, their population, you know, their people, they were blessed upon each generation to be successful. And each 
dynasty looked upon the last dynasty to outdo them to be better based upon service. That's why service was the main attribute of the leadership in Kemet. The problem became, again, I'm going to say it slowly again, is when the priesthood, the rulership, and the people were out of alignment. From being in Ma'at to being out of Ma'at allowed them over time, after ruling for thousands of years, to now in the, in the latter decline to be susceptible to outside influence. And that's why current day today, you, you see a Palestine, you see a, a Jerusalem, and you see uh, um, most of the, the Muslim influence is not in Mecca, it's actually in Egypt right now. Most of the power is in Egypt. Um, so if Egypt was so wicked, kind of like we said earlier about the dollar, the dollar is so wicked, right? Why you give? Why you training in the house of God? If Kemet is so wicked to Islam, then why mo, uh, most of the leadership and why the Arabs never left Kemet? Do you know all the mosques that you see in 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 Kemet and in Mecca, the gold and the limestone and alabaster on those mosques that was taken from Kemet? Do you know that, brother? Which at one point the Great Pyramid was all limestone. And it had a gold capstone at the top. The gold at the top represented Ra or the solar principle of Ra or Aten Ra, the revealed light. And so it was an energy center. It's a conductor. Slaves don't build conductors. Do you know that the Great Pyramid is actually mathematically aligned to the center of the planet? Mathematically aligned. It's at the center, the Great Pyramid. You know, slaves don't build that. That's science. The, the, it's an energy center, an energy center, okay? It was a superconductor. It was harnessing power for that land. And then you see pyramids show up in South America, North America, all over the planet, even parts of Japan. Superconductors. So just like how we have solar panels now. That was that, there. That was that their was interplanetary. Their Ooh. Yes, and Ooh. that's why all of them were linked the more, they were all linked. They were not a separate people. They just, you know, they, you know, over time they had a different expression. But, you know, the, the, the family that were in South America, you know, the Omic that eventually became the, 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 the forefathers of the Inca, Aztec, and Maya, you know, they had their pyramids. You know? And the more you go around, you say, all these pyramids are showing up. Had, all these mounds are showing up. They were all in tune. So to the ancestors hold something very sacred that we all could look at, and the main thing I take away from Kemet, right, is self-accountability, right? How do I apply the principles of Kemet through my daily humanitarian efforts? So I'm not physically in the land of Kemet right now, but, I can, I, but I'm inspired by the attributes of service, right? And so what are you going to be willing to do? We don't have to be stuck in the concept of coming in our brain, but the principles of the Almighty through Het Heru, uh, divine love and, and sacred relationships, the principle of Tehuti, divine intelligence, the principle of, of, of Ma'at, truth, righteousness, reciprocity, and order. These are principles that you can apply in yourself. When, when you say supernova, when you say, when you talk about the pyramid and it being limestone and it being a superconductor and it being the center of the earth, it make me just, and you know, and how in tune they were with, you know, uh, the cosmos and the sun and the stars and the moon and all that. It makes me think about the solar eclipse that recently happened. Mm. Um, <laughs> what, what, what's your take on this solar eclipse? I mean, our ancestors were into all, knew about these celestial events from your research. W what was this solar eclipse about, man? The whole point of a cosmic event, when the ancestors observed cosmic events, was that they looked at it as a mirror as so above below, the law of correspondence. Right. Okay? So the whole point of the, the sun um, being eclipsed was a time to look within, clean out within. In the shadow world or the Amun Ra, you have to retreat to do your inner light work. So when the light is covered, right, the, the initiate must go within his or her self power and reboot. What happens with the chaos when you're not in accordance with your divine reset or your conscious rebooting, you go crazy. You're out of accordance with us as so above below. So 
but when we when we had our uh, new moon and we had our eclipse happening, those everybody that is woke, if they he or she is not applying what you woke on in your daily affirmations and attributes, then you will be out of accordance to SO above below. You'll be out of accordance. And so there's a lot, there's a part of humanity that is not in sync. And so we're seeing how the chaos is manifesting. The elements are going to do what they're going to do. We're gonna, the floods will continue. The rains will continue. Because the planet has to, the planet is in accordance. See, the planet is going within and cleansing itself. The waters is rising. The levees are breaking. Because the water is shifting. The planet is cleansing her, his, herself. So the best thing humanity could do is look out for humanity and mirror what the elements of nature are doing. This is why in ancient Kemet, uh, the, ele the nature elements showed up on the walls. Okay, they looked at the ibis not to not to worship an ibis on a human human body. No, they they put the ibis there because they looked up how the ibis would. The bird would cleanse itself, give itself a colonic. It would dip its beak in the water and cleanse its intestines. And they observed nature. And they said, ah, they attributed that to Tahuti, divine intelligence. You know how to cleanse yourself. When you saw the beetle, when you see the Kepra, the, the, they wasn't worshiping beetles. They observed how the beetle will go through the metamorphosis process. And the beetle will be in accordance with the moon. And how it would move and how it would transverse through nature. And they ascribed an attribute. They say, wow, look how God shows up in the observation of the beetle. We call it Kepra, divine transformation. So, no, I don't worship a beetle. I observe nature. I observe the beetle. I observe the, the lion. Okay? I observe the, the, the elements and, and see how man, how man, woman moves in accordance with the elements. So when you see a cosmic event as so above below, it's a, it's a time that we have to be, be, have a self-reflective time to do deeper work, a deeper commitment. You close off and you shadow your, your light to self-address, self-accountability. So when you come back up out of your eclipse now, you're back out on task. You're redeployed into the world to do your work. See, the key, Brother Rich, is not to keep romanticizing or chemicizing our ancient ancestors, what we did in the past. We are the one blood continuum. We are the continuation. How can we apply the principles of ancient Kemet now? So it's not for the pessimists to say, well, get, build the pyramid now. It's bigger than building the pyramid now. The pyramid we have to build now is not a, a man-made structure. It's the pyramid in ourselves. It's the trinity of your mind, body, spirit. If you was a Kemite, then you, if you were Egyptian, build the pyramid. See, that's, that's, the, that's the troll. We're not talking about troll talk. We're talking about God talk. See, a troll will tell you some stupid idiot stuff like that. But the troll's not going to build his or her pyramid. We're saying we're not in troll talk. We're in God talk. And God talk, how, we, how do we see a pyramid today? A pyramid would not apply right now physically here. What needs to be applied is the pyramidal consciousness of the original man and woman here. Body, mind, spirit, accountability. Tur like Reverend Ike said, turning on and turning up the God within you. The goddess within you. And that's what I would like to our brothers and sisters to come away with. You know, not getting stuck in the romanticism or the commenticism of what we did in the past. But we are all of our ancestors. Okay? So it's this, you know, the, the Kemetic influence is not just Kemet in the physical space where it's at. It's throughout Africa, throughout the continent, West Africa, South Africa, North Africa, then the, and throughout Asia. We are interplanetary people. And we're into cosmic people. Okay? We are star stuff. The same elements in, that make up the stars is in our bodies. Okay? We are star beings. Okay? And, and, and so we all have the opportunity to shine and to illuminate ourselves and to inspire each other to eclipse our negativity and to open up and rebirth into our positive possibility through action daily, Brother Rich. 
I'm glad you talk about the as above, so below concept, the way in which you do and the way with in which other teachers um, teach as well. You know, we got Brother Panic, uh, Dr. Valentine, um, you know, a, a lot of teachers that deal with that science because a lot of people get confused when you're studying the star systems or constellations or you're studying the cosmos or whatever and they're saying man we got problems down here get your ass from up out out there and come down here but little do they know when we're studying out there we're really studying in here right. because what's out there is in there the law of correspondence yeah. i saw above below right and and so but the reason why some people say that is because there's been a demographic like the religious demographic that is waiting on an outside interface so there's people that focus on cosmic events externally and right, not applying right, the right, law of right, correspondence. So, right. that, so they're really talking about the same people, the same community that focus on waiting for God to come back. This is what Reverend Ike spoke against. This is what, uh, in essence, that uh, Aten Ra Kun Ignatian spoke against for the priesthood at his time of his saying, hey, you know, we got the internal thing happening. Now we have to represent the external too. You know, because they say, well, let's master this internal thing. Well, let's master internal and external, right? So what we're saying, Brother Rich, is that we're not here to demonize someone's faith or perspective. We're saying that there's wisdom and sacred objective built in everybody's system because it's all of our system. The power in any word of God or observation, ancestral or current, is by applying it. On the platform of the conscious community, you have so many brothers and sisters who have been on, on the debate scene, have been doing their research, and the, the powers in the people to begin to apply that. How can you apply the lecture you've just been inspired to see in your daily life? If you can't apply the lecture, then it's of no use. If, the if what you learn in a lecture or a debate can't transform you in the next 72 hours to be a better human being, then you're wasting your time, all due respect. So, I challenge you all to, every human has a fallibility. If you're inspired by someone that motivated you to think outside and objectively, to, to be better and do better and, and, and to go further, use that to apply and turn on the God within you. Being in integrity with your internal power. Master that, harness it, commit to it daily, holistically, body, mind, and spirit. Then, Resonate that inspiration to others and, and show them by your example how to turn on their divine light. Earlier you said, all right, so in ancient Kemet, you had to wait 42 years to, to do what now? Uh, in ancient Kemet, each priest had to go through a preschool uh, um, study for 42 years. It took, it took you 42 years to get to become a certified Kemetic priest at that time. So do so do you think in modern 40, time 40 42 years yeah and so do you think in modern time um uh our teachers are, are coming out and teaching the people too soon we may have a teacher in their 20s their 30s is, is that too soon well all due respect yeah, bless you brother thank you brother we're just in a different time continuum okay okay what that means is that you know so someone will say, oh, your time doesn't exist. You know, it's man-made. Okay, well, so, you know, we make, we've created this interface. So it's a continuum. That applied at that time for them. Um, the thing now, it's not about being an ageist. Like someone just has to be like uh, two of my stepfathers that many of you um, know and, 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 and study from. Um, first one is uh, Reverend Phil Valentine, you know, Baba, Baba Phil. That was my stepfather. Uh, years later, my stepfather was Baba Heru, Sinar Ankara Samar Sepata. So those are the two people that raised me in this consciousness for those that think I just appeared out of nowhere. And my mother being Queen of Fools. So, right. With that being said, um, what I learned from them was that uh, you don't, it's not about being an ageist. It's about uh, doing your observation, letting yourself be a ex reflection of what you're observing, right? And showing others through your, through your action and through your activity how to turn on their own interface, right? And the times we're in right now demand us to accelerate the information. That's why you see so much information. Lack of application. That's why it's, so, it's like Babel. We, like the modern day Babylon. It buys Babylon. And so, so even even in, in the being woke, that that's just a hashtag. Where's the integrity of applying woke? 
Okay, you know, uh, like me and Red Pill said uh, when you taped us before, you know, you wake somebody up, right? But their next, what they're gonna do now that they've woken from their rest, will show the the fortitude of their day, right? So now, so you wake somebody up, you're blessed to wake up another day. You just sit around your house and do nothing productive for yourself. That is that that is the sum total, or like Doc, Reverend Ike would say, your money for the day. But if you have a if you if you woke up and you just now you have a daily rituals to fortify yourself, you do your maybe prayer affirmation, make you a holistic meal. You know you do certain things to be, prepare you for your day. You have an agenda for the day. Now you are deploying and applying being woke. Now you now you move from being woke to being active. So I, we need to get people just being woke, being active and excited. Everybody's like now excited about being woke. But where's the work? We say woke, but where's the work? So you only do the work if you're active. So we need to go from woke to be work. Woke to work. When you, everybody talking about Kemet and the pyramids, they had to go from woke to work, right? So I'm not here, Brother Richard, say that someone's at, not at an age to open up the, uh, the enlightenment, the inspiration. What I'm saying is that we, we should be in compassion and humanity for ourselves and the service to others. That's how we apply in real time the attributes of our ancestors. You know, it's not staying stuck what we did four or five thousand years ago and ten thousand years ago. But what are we doing currently now, right? When we looked at um, Brother Sarnetta, uh shout out to uh, House of Consciousness, had um, the program um, two weeks ago, the House of Consciousness reunion. One of the most powerful highlights of that reunion that I really want to highlight is when my when my father Baba Heru uh, gave. Um, uh, one of the leadership of um, the uh, House of Israel, you know, um, um, what's the brother's name? Um, uh, I forget this brother, the big brother, the big homie's name. Um, from uh, uh, the Israel brother, um, the Hebrew Israelite brother. Uh, his name skips me right now, but he blessed him. My father's a craftsman. He makes comedic jewelry. He makes, you know, all he calls jewelry, emblems of culture. So he made him a Star of David, and that was real powerful. That a Kemite. An active Kemite made with his own hands a star David um, and put and blessed the, the, the leadership of uh, the house of David or the, you know, the, the, the Hebrew Israelite brother. You talking about Tazaria? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, Baba, yeah, he made that for Tazaria. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what's up, man. Yeah. So, so th this is big because, you know, a few, a few programs ago, you know, I talked about how uh, we all Hebrew. Remember, I talked about that. How we have to, you know, that 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 Kendrick Lamar's awakening is is for all of us, right? And and that we have to look at our again. We're looking at Kemet from a, a European lens, so we're only going to see uh, Hebrew and Kemite as a conflict. But you understand that they are the same people. It's just a different aspect, a different tribe. They all. I mean, you ain't going to be somewhere for three to five hundred years and not have that blood. There's just no way around it. You know what I'm saying? So my point is saying that currently, Baba Heru making. Um, Captain Tazariat, the, the, the six-pointed star chain. My father is a high priest in the Kemetic culture. For him to do that and honor Captain Tazariat with the, with, the, with the star of David was so profound. It, it showed ancestral healing, Brother Rich. It showed thousands of years looking at it from a European um, lens and also from a biblical lens of conflict that gesture amongst all of those different bodies of black people, of Africans, original people, of Moorish people, indigenous people in one room witnessing a healing ritual to the ancestors were present. That means all the Hebrew Israelite ancestors, all the Kemite ancestors were there in spirit that Baba Heru, a Kemetic elder, he's been a Kemetic priestess for over 45 years saluted Brother Tazariot with a custom-made, powerful emblem, six-pointed star. And so that showed how we can now be, we don't have to be stuck in antiquity or the Bible then, but we can actually show healing with the biblical word and Kemet frequency now through our harmony. Right, and so that's what we want to we want to we want to see more attributes of that, and and have and, and and have revenge of wellness for our ancestors. Our ancestors deserve a revenge, you know, to revenge uh, the wrongs and and, and, re and revenge in righteousness, revenge in healing, 
You know, we always look at revenge from, you know, or the payback from the lens of, you know, you did this to me, I'm going to do this to you. And now we have to look at it from a, a lens of, you know, let's heal. Let's work on daily attributes, daily accountability attributes of how we're applying it. Again, going from woke to work. And so I salute Baba Heru and Tazariat for being a great comedic Hebrew, Heru in Hebrew, right? attribute of the beginnings of healing okay so we want to definitely salute that attribute because that's that's ancestral fortitude that's how we pay back that's that's a, that's a righteous revenge you know it is is to is to show daily honoring each other in the midst of the chaos the bloodline of the what we call the african american the black american the man the melanated man here in america uh, some people feel as though you're fantasizing to think you are a descendant of Egypt. Some people feel as though you're fantasizing to think you come from Israel. Um, it seems as though we feel as though we come from so many different places, uh, I guess because, you know, our whole history was taken from us. What can you tell me about the bloodline of the melanated man here and our journey? Where, how did we get here? Uh, the, the melanated man here in the West has all blood. So he's right when he says he's a Hebrew. He's right when he says a Kemite. He's right when he says he's from West Africa. We have every, the, what makes a black man and woman here unique is that we have every bloodline. They, every bloodline passes to us. You can look at our phenotypes. We have every, every face is on the planet. You can look at every so-called African-American and no matter what hood you go to and you can see that face in Australia, Japan, China, Cambodia, Philippines, South Africa, West Africa, Cameroon, Congo, e uh, Egypt, Kemet, uh, Sudan, Ethiopia, Burkina Faso. It's all, we, we have every bloodline here. The African American or black person in the West is the culmination of all the bloodlines. All the so-called Native American bloodlines. All the so-called Native Americans from South America. We have every bloodline here. Everyone, we have the end. We have a, the righteous and the wicked. It's in our blood. We we we've been made love into existence, and we've been raped into existence. Everybody's here. We look like everybody. That's why nobody can really claim us because we look like everybody. You can have a family, right? And, and you got five brothers and sisters, and y'all all have a phenotype that kind of connects the look. But then everybody has a unique look. That's true. And you can go, and, and then you can go throughout Africa. Or Asia, and you can find different tribes that can claim each sibling. Because the so called African American black person here has every, we're the only one that has everybody. Whereas on the planet, everybody can be isolated based upon the, you know, their, their different group, their tribe. We have all tribes. That's why nobody can really fully claim us because we're the only ones that have everybody in our bloodline. That's what makes us unique and special. That's why we're powerful. That's why we should claim us. We, we don't not say we're not claiming our family, but claim us first. We should claim us first. But we could also claim all of ourselves. Why not? Even if you say, okay, the, the narrative of slaves. Oh, you know, we, we, slaves are only from West Africa. Well, if you go to West Africa and you look at the, the you know, the, the, uh, from the, the, the Igbo people, the uh, Akan people, or the Yoruba people, in all of their so-called spiritual religious systems, they all point to Kemet. So what are you talking about? All the Orisha are the Interu in the Yoruba system. And the Yoruba people, they would tell you they point to the Nile Valley. So what are you talking about? All you clowns talking about, oh, we only from West Africa. West Africa says they're from Kemet. The Dogon, the Dogon of Mali, West Africa, they say they learned to chart the stars from Kemet. Whew. So everybody, oh, we only from the west side. So we still west side, east side banging? Look at that. We can't escape this clipping blood thing. West side, east side, south side. Oh, oh, blacks are only from the west side. Well, guess what? Everybody from the west side says their origins is from the northeast side, as far as spirituality goes. They all claim Kemet. They have rituals right now in West Africa, rituals right now, where um and 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 um and the and and with the Yoruba and Akan, they both have rituals where they salute the deity. The female goddess, and she wears the crown of Hed Heru. Where'd they get that from? 
she has a gold crown of head, the same horns of Hedaru, in the with the sun that's in the middle, Hedaru. But yet, ooh, ooh, you only from West Africa. But the West Africa have traditions that respect Kemet. So guess what? We all from Kemet still. We st so you can't you can't escape you. It's all Sankofa. Why do I have to set trip on my bloodline? Why do I I'm all bloodlines? It's motherfucking one blood. You know what I'm saying? We talk about soup whoop to our ancestors. Soup whoop to humanity. Soup whoop to the original man and woman. We all bloods. We all one blood. We have we have it all in our family. You know what I'm saying? We got it all in our family. And the African Americans or the black people here, or the original people or the Moors here, they look like it. They look, we look like every freaking body. I went to Kemet. I've seen the walls. Everybody on the temple walls in the statues, Brother Rich, look like everybody in my family and everybody ever knew in my community. Same faces. How you say that? I see the same faces. I saw they're on the walls now. Now some of the uh, Europeans are there uh, taking the complexion off. So while you debating whether we come from Kemet or not, they taking them chocolate dark faces and trying to make them lighter. But the phenotype is still there. The noses are still there. The ones that they ain't shoot off or uh, chip off. The lip, the bottom lip that me and you have. Brother Rich, you got the bottom lip. They, they cut that off. But it's all there. It's all there. You know what I'm saying? So, Brother Rich, why set trip when you can heru uh, rep? I'm not set tripping. Set is the chaos of disorder. I'm heru repping. Why am I set tripping when I'm Heru weapon? My wings are expanded and they cover the trajectory of all of our ancestry. So I'm, guess what, Brother Rich? I'm claiming West Africa. I'm claiming South Africa. I'm claiming North Africa. I'm claiming East Africa. I'm claiming Asia. I'm claiming the Down Under, Australia. I'm claiming India, Cambodia, Philippines. You know what I'm saying? Where the Buddha has big lips and full noses and Bantu knots. Okay? I'm claiming wherever we be because we everywhere. I'm claiming all the Native American tribes. I'm claiming all the original Moors. I'm claiming everybody because we are everybody. If you open up our DNA here, us here, you're going to find us all around the planet. You're going to find six or seven different bloodlines. You're going to see some of us got European ancestry. Some of us got West Africa, South Africa, North Africa, all in one family, all in one family. Brother Rich. Basically, you could take all your family members and spread you all out to the planet. Mm. That's how powerful we are. You can go inside your family and do everybody do the little g g genetic thing, and everybody's going to be, everybody collectively represent everybody on the planet. That's how powerful us people here are. That's deep. So why am I going to be tripping on a, just a Hebrew side? No, give me, give me the Hebrew side. Give me the Kemet side. Give me the West Africa. I want all the black magic. That's why it's called Black Magic 363. I want all the black magic 363. Okay? Add it all up. I want all the black magic 363. I don't just want uh, three magic. I don't want six magic. And another three. I want black magic 363, Brother Rich. Abracadabra. You're rocking with the true and living. We are the true and living. And so let's now embrace our full God self. If we say that we're the original, that means we have the original DNA melanated bloodline code. You can dial us up anywhere on the planet. Brother Rich, you have the original dial download code. I can dial you up in, Co in Cambodia. I can dial you up in Cape Town. I can dial your genetic up in West Africa. I can dial you up in the Nile Valley. We all, we, we are everywhere. Seer of millions of years is our name. Coming forth advancing from the winds of, wings and the winds of the most high divine. Nuku, Nuku, Amiku, Kemam, Keperu, Image, Nrayu. We are that we are. Shining beams, dwellers in light, come from the limbs of the most high daily. That's who we are, Brother Rich. We are not limited. We are unlimited. That's why they can't figure this out. They're like, yo, these folks got everybody. Even if you came from the west side, right? From slavery. Mm -hmm. You still have black folks here. And they had sex, Brother Rich. You think the West African just didn't have sex with the black folks here? No, they had a lot of sex. And then another generation of black folks from somewhere else came here. And they had some sex. So now you had the west side. You got, you got Native American, right? You got, brother, we've been having sex this whole time. Right. So we got a bunch of, we got, brother, there's everybody's here. Then you got the Caribbean family coming up on the mainland. We've been having sex with them. Then you got Africans coming from East Africa. They've been having sex with us. Brother, 
is there's no pure bloodline of black folks in America? Black folks in America have everybody in them. And if you didn't have it 100 years, you got them now. <laughs> right. Okay? Right. Okay? And guess what, Brother Rich? Before, you think when we was in West Africa, we just was hanging out in West Africa? We were traveling all around the continent of Africa. And having sex there, too. And having babies there, too. That's why you can see in your European tradition the, the Arisha or the Interu. Because they was having sex after they did the knowledge of the priesthood and the, and the rituals. They was having sex. And they came back and they passed it on. Brother, we have everybody inside of us. You know what I'm saying? Some of the sisters here with small waists and big, beautiful, gorgeous hips. You, well, you know what part of Africa that, that's mainly at. I mean, all Africa they built. But the main Af part of Africa that, that, that has that as their daily is South Africa. So how do you explain that? I mean, extreme. I'm talking about 24-inch waist and 55, 60-inch hips. You know what I'm saying? I mean, talking about what? Extreme pairs, extreme gorgeous BBWs, cocoa bottle shapes. Where do you think that came from? Because the bloodline is mixed. We have everybody in us. We are, we are, we are the X-Men and women. We're the mutants of the planet. We're the mighty mutants. We're the X-Men. We're the, we're the amazing rejects. Nobody claims us because they, 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 they scared. We have everybody in them. But guess what, Brother Rich? It's us on, in, in here in the Western Hemisphere. It's, it was our entertainment. It's our culture. It's our music. It's our sports. We inspired the world. We inspired every melanated person to do everything they did. Hip hop was born in the Bronx, right? The black folks here. It is the, it is the number one cultural dominant force on the planet. Everything we do here, the world do. When we was turning up in the 60s, what did everybody start doing in, in, in Cuba and, and, and all through Africa? They was turning up too. Because they saw us turn up. We, mo we moved the crowd, man. We moved the crowd. And I say they don't move the crowd, but we be moving the crowd, brother. We move the crowd. Why? Because we have the men. They, they, they do what we do because we are them. There's no church separation between church and state. We all united. The church and the state is united in the state of consciousness of the almighty God applied through our wonderful, gorgeous DNA. Okay? We, we are black in the stars. We are on earth as so above below. You, you can't escape us. We are powerful. Okay? And the ankh. You know how the ankh is so powerful? Because all you got to do is this. Extend your hands, the head, the body, the extensions. We are the ankh. So my Hebrew brothers would say, I don't deal with no comedic stuff. Go like that. Bang, you're an onk. <laughs> That's it. You know, what do you mean? It means life. It means you. It's you. Who? The onk of the onk. The onk is you. Stop being scared of you. This is the onk. There you go. That's Kemet. You are Kemet right now. Oh, Kemet was, well, you worshiping Kemet. Kemet. Right now. That, the onk. That easy, huh? That easy. Consciousness, the womb of thought, your mind, okay? Your body holding your mind, supporting your mind, your womb of thought, your extensions. You are the onk. You are eternal life. You're eternal because you have the ability to pass on your legacy, your spiritual legacy, your legacy of service to humanity, and your progeny, your children. Eternal life. Need I say more? We're awesome. Ah, man. I love us. I love us. True, you too, trolls. I love you too. Because I know who you really are. I know who you really are. Man. And ain't no name you can call me that can make me not love you because I'm God expressing back to you. So any name that's not of God, it, don't, it bounces off me. I, I humbly salute you because I know who you truly are. And I got, that's why I tell you, as a child, divine, shining star of the Almighty, I say to you, those that hate on me, hey, if you can do what I'm doing and do it better, then I bless you. Please be better than me. That is the point. Wanna be end, better. Want to end it on that high note, man. That was a real high note to end this segment, man. I definitely appreciate the way you just went in right now, Supernova. Um, we just jumped right into it in the beginning. So leave the people your information. I know you got the magnificent greens on the table. Super Mega Greens. Yeah. www.supermegagreens.com. 
forward slash R-I-C-H, rich. Forward slash rich as in building your internal fortitude and wealth. You get 20% if you go on to the site, www.supermegagreens.com. A, a powerful chlorophyll plant proteins to fortify your body. Follow me on social media. Your brother Supernova Slum is on Twitter. I am on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, S-U-P-A-N-O-V-A-S-L-O-M. I'm also on YouTube. Follow me on YouTube, S-U-P-A-N-O-V-A-S-L-O-M, on all social media. Love and light to my Black Magic 363 family. Activate the God in you daily. This is Brother Rich. I want everybody, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters, people who donate on PayPal. If you haven't, make sure you sign up, www.patreon.com slash blackmagic363. Uh, thank everybody for listening. We signing out, family. We're going to see you next time. Peace. Peace.